Plymouth Gin is known far and wide not only as a very popular gin worldwide, but also as the oldest active gin distillery in the UK. It is said that the popularity of the drink is still one of the staple trades of Plymouth City, as well as being a brand that is rich in history. It is believed that the distillery is one of the oldest standing buildings in Plymouth, dating back to at least 1431. The beginning of its known life was as a Dominican priory under the Order of Preachers, also known as the Dominican Order. It functioned as a small monastery for the Catholic Order until being disestablished in 1536 during Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. Many features, such as windows and doors of the monastery, can be seen in the distillery today. Within England and other European countries, the Dominican friars were commonly referred to as the Black Friars due to their black kappa or cloak they wore over their white habits, thus inspiring the name of the late, later distillery. The building was then used for a collection of things, including a debtor's prison. Even now, original cell bars are still intact and displayed throughout the building. In 1620, the building was believed to have been the last resting spot for the Pilgrim Fathers, where they spent their last night in Plymouth, drinking to their heart's content, just before they let off. The following morning, they took a short walk to the harbour, where they would have sailed on the Mayflower, leading to one of the first main settlements in America. From 1720, the rise of the gin craze began. There was an extensive period where gin remained highly popular. Ordinary people would make and sell gin in small batches in their own homes to make money. The popularity of gin swept through the country until it finally slowed down when the Second Gin Act of 1751 regulated the production and consumption of gin, limiting the distillery to big companies that could afford to produce big batches and afford the retail and distilling taxes. As of 1793, the Coates family had brought Blackfriars Distillery and were distilling and selling the gin under the company Coates & Co. Coates & Co. gin became the drink of choice by the Royal Navy as it was produced just behind the dockyard and subsequently was taken everywhere with Royal Navy. By the 1850s, sailors were consuming over 1,000 barrels of Navy-strength gin, which was only 57% alcohol. The drink itself took inspiration from the Navy, who made it a well-known brand within the British Empire too. The 57% Navy-strength gin was invented for the sole reason of passing the Navy's proof test. This was a simple test whereby if gunpowder soaked in the gin could be lit, then it would be permitted on the ship as it would have enough alcohol in it. The introduction of pink gin and gimlet cocktails were also thought to be used to help cure scurvy to the fruits within them. In 1882, the first Plymouth trademark was registered to Coates & Co, making it the only gin in the UK to have a protected geographical indication designation. We are all familiar with the idea that champagne must be produced in Champagne. Similarly, Plymouth Gin may only be produced within the city limits. Other smaller distilleries in Plymouth can still produce gin, but are limited to naming it Plymouth Style Gin. In 2004, the business was owned by Coates & Co. It was then bought and taken over by the Scandinavian group VNS, who then renamed the gin to Plymouth Gin. In 2008, Plymouth Gin changed ownership again to Pernod Ricard. The same year, the company had a brief scare with a kitchen fire severely damaging the building. Plymouth Gin has become one of the main attractions of the city of Plymouth. In 2017, the distillery won two awards in the Devon Tourism Awards, a gold award being the small attraction of the year and a bronze award for guided tour of the year. Plymouth Gin is embodied in the culture of Plymouth. Dating back to one of the oldest buildings within the city itself, and it's still in use, it can be argued that the business carries the Plymouth culture on its back into the modern era. In the modern day, few other establishments or locations within the Plymouth hold the weight the Plymouth gin does. Not only does it maintain an example of Plymouth culture, but also represents itself as an excellent case study for the gin craze when you look back on its history. The distillery itself was created as a result of the high demand for gin, and even now remains faithful to its original purpose. To this day, the distillery allows the public to view the building and the distillery on a handful of tours they offer, as well as gin tasting, dinner services, and a bar. Plymouth attracts roughly 5.5 million visitors per year, and has seen a £453 million business turnover in 2015. And with the Mayflower 400 happening in 2020, celebrating the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower to the New World, Plymouth is expected to receive over 6 million visitors in 2020 alone. Plymouth Gin has and will continue to support the economic and historical value of the city. It is more than just a distillery. It's an example of British history 
It is a heritage that is still beloved across the country as a well-defined gin and a nod to many years ago.